Hello, this is Brother Cromar again from the Maths Department. This is a continuation of the lesson on inference for one mean sigma known confidence intervals. And just to go over again what we covered from part one is basically as our level of confidence increases, the width of the confidence interval increases. So going back to this, if we, when we see that we go from a 95 to a 99, the width of this confidence interval increases. What I did not mention in part one, primarily is because our, our critical value goes up from 1.96 to 2.58. Now some may wonder why the level of conf, why the width goes up of our confidence interval when we increase the level of confidence. Well, if you want to gain greater confidence and capturing that true mean, we need to increase that width. Okay. However, conversely, if we were to, let me go back to this, as the sample size increases, the width of the confidence interval decreases. So going back to this formula, as we increase our sample size, since it's in our denominator, the width of our confidence interval will decrease. Okay. So now a couple more slides here. We have a few more slides. The requirement for confidence intervals for one sample sigma known is, is three. The sample is a simple random sample. The population standard deviation is known. And either one of these conditions are satisfied. The population is normally distributed or the sample size is greater than 30. This goes back to we want to make sure that the distribution of our sample means is normally distributed. And with the second one, if our sample size it says greater than 30, but if our sample size is large, the requirement is met due to the central limit there. Okay. So now, final thoughts on confidence on intervals. The level of confidence describes the process of creating an interval that predicts the mean mu, which is unknown. So approximately 1 minus alpha, so say if alpha is 0.05, approximately 95% of all possible confidence intervals will contain mu. So what this means is if we were going to do this a gazillion times, we would ca capture the true mean 95% of the time. This does not mean, however, the probability of containing mu. The interval either captures it or does not. Okay. So say, for instance, if we were to uh, flip a coin, before we flip the coin, what's the likelihood of getting heads? Well, it's 50%. But once you catch it and you cover up not knowing whether it's heads or tails, what's the probability of capturing head or getting heads on top? Well, it's either 0 or 1. It's either you got the head on top or you didn't. Okay. So that's the difference. So, so level of confidence deals with the process that if we do this a bunch of times, that 95%, if we're doing 95% confidence interval, 95% of the time approximately we capture the true mean, but probability we either got it or we did not. Okay. The second issue is sample size required to estimate the population mean with a level of confidence of 1 minus alpha times 100% with a specified margin of error m is given by, and here's the formula for it, it's the critical value times the standard deviation divided by the desired margin of error, and we square all that, okay? Now here's an example of this here. Let me just pop this up here on the screen. Okay, based on historic data obtained from Brother Scott Bertram, the grade point average of students at BYU-Idaho is known to have a population standard deviation of 0.68. We want to create a confidence interval for the true mean GPA for last semester. So what sample size would you need to get a margin of error of 0.2 for a 95% confidence interval? So what we would do here, so we would take 1.96, because we're doing a 95% confidence interval, that's for this critical value, times the standard deviation, divided by the margin of error, which is 0.2, and then we square all that, and we get 44.41. We round that up to get a sample size of 45. What about a sample size, what sample size would you need to get a margin of error of 0.1 for a 95% confidence interval? So what would change here versus what you, what, what happened here? Well, the only difference is, is that now we, we instead of a margin of error of 0.2, we have 0.1. And then we solve for it, we get a number of 177.64, so we round up to 178. Notice here, when we half the margin, desired margin of error, the sample size takes, it's a bigger, it, the sample size almost quadruples when you want to half the, mar, the, uh, the desired margin of error. And that concludes the videos for uh, the lesson dealing with inference for one mean sigma known primarily dealing with confidence intervals. If you have any questions, please speak to your teacher or to one of your TAs.